on February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X stood before his family and a crowd of about 400 people gathered inside the Autobahn Ballroom in Harlem, New York. Suddenly, two men stood up in the middle of the ballroom and began a fake argument to distract the crowd. As Malcolm X pleaded for calm, three men sitting in the front row close to the stage drew weapons and shot Malcolm. One assassin fired a sawed-off double-barrel shotgun. From the shotgun that was fired, three buckshot slugs pierced Malcolm's heart, shredded his aorta, punctured both of his lungs, killing him almost instantly. The buckshot slugs were each the size of a .32 caliber bullet. Undercover cop Gene Roberts administered mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to Malcolm as the assassins ran from the building. One of Malcolm X's bodyguards fired at the fleeing assassins, striking one of them named Thomas Hagen in the left leg. Members of Malcolm's organization of Afro-American unity seized the wounded assassin Hayer and began assaulting him until police suddenly arrived to attempt to free the captured assassin, Hagen. Despite being wounded, Hagen struggled to free himself from police and members of the crowd who were holding on to him. Back inside the ballroom, Malcolm X lay dead or dying on the ballroom stage floor, while many members of his organization did their best to comfort their fallen leader. Outside the ballroom, a large ruckus was going on that was captured by a 16 millimeter motion picture camera. The film footage of captured assassin Hagen being assaulted by Malcolm's followers moved so rapidly that one of his secrets has remained intact until now. William Bradley, the shotgun assassin of Malcolm X, can be seen attempting to rescue his accomplice, Thomas Hagen, from the crowd. A newspaper in William Bradley's left coat pocket is circled to help the viewer track him. Due to the poor quality of the 16 millimeter footage that is 46 years old, other geometrical shapes will be used to spotlight the faces and body parts of Hagen, Bradley, the police, and others. After picking an opportune moment, shotgun assassin William Bradley rushes in and attempts to free Hagen. To the naked eye, it appears that Bradley, the man with the yellow circle newspaper in his pocket, is attacking Hagen, but it is the complete opposite. Hagen reaches for Bradley with his left hand. Police officers struggle to keep Malcolm's followers from tearing Hagen to shreds. From screen right, two of Malcolm's followers move in to attack Hagen. One of them, in a light colored suit, holds a folded wooden chair to strike Hagen if he breaks loose. Bradley assaults a man who is holding Hagen's neck. The force of Bradley's assault is so strong, the man falls into a police officer. Blue lines indicate the widening opening created by Bradley. Spotlighted by a blue pentagon shape is Officer Arnold Arnoff, who will play a key role in this incident. Bradley grabs the sleeve of an officer's coat and pushes the officer aside to create an opening for Hagen to escape. Yellow lines outline arm movement. Officer Arnoff, spotlighted in blue, notices that Bradley is assaulting his fellow officers and trying to help Hagen escape, moves in to subdue Bradley. Bradley uses his massive, powerful body to force himself between the officers.
despite being clawed, struck, and having his limbs twisted. Hagen never audibly makes a sound. His martial arts training makes him divert the pain. Police continue to keep the angry crowd off Hagen, who is highlighted in green. Malcolm's men grasp even more firmly onto Hagen, determined to stop him from escaping. Hagen struggles to hold on to the offices as Malcolm's men rip claw and try to plummel him to the ground. Officer Arnoff continues to reach for Bradley. Bradley in yellow loses his grip on his accomplice Hagen. Bradley violently nudges his left shoulder into Officer Arnoff with such force he nearly knocks the officer off his feet. The assault to Officer Arnoff is so powerful the officer is nearly knocked off screen. One of Malcolm's followers, spotlighted in purple, has realized that Bradley is the shotgun assassin who has just shot Malcolm, goes after Bradley to attack him. But another officer, perhaps fearing that another fight could break out, grabs Malcolm's follower in purple and prevents him from pursuing Bradley. The officer forces the man in purple up against the wall. After Bradley calmly walks away, Officer Arnoff recoups from Bradley's assault and refocuses his attention to the rescue of Hagen. Realizing that the situation is getting out of control, Officer Arnoff unholsters his service revolver and fires it into the air. Another officer beckons to Officer Arnoff to reholster his weapon fearing that the warning shot may escalate the situation further and into a full-scale riot. But the warning shot has served its intended purpose. Malcolm X's supporters released their death grip on the wounded assassin Hagen. After Bradley discontinued his rescue attempt on his accomplice Hagen, Officer Arnoff realizes that his fellow officers have gained control of the situation. Hagen lies on the ground, badly injured, but now out of harm's way. Cognizant of the all-seeing eye of the motion picture camera's lens pointing in his direction, Officer Arnoff wonders what the captured footage will reveal. Uniform officers, as well as an officer in plain clothes, can be observed keeping Malcolm's followers at bay and preventing the continued attack on the wounded assassin, Hagen. Malcolm's supporters, completely subdued and under the restraint of the police officers, obey the officers' commands and fully retreat. Others look on and stare at the wounded assassin, Hagen, wondering what will now become of him, now that he is in police custody. Hagen lies on the ground and presses his left hand against the bullet wound in his left leg.
Police lift up Hagen and take him into custody. The police reported that five men were involved in the assassination of Malcolm X. The media also reported that two suspects were caught at the scene, but this would later be changed to the apprehension of only one suspect. William Bradley, shown in this still frame, moves in to rescue Thomas Hagen from the police and Malcolm's followers. Several witnesses to the shooting describe the shotgunner as a bearded man. Bradley's beard is clearly visible. Bradley was also described as stout, dark-skinned, and wearing a dark gray or black overcoat. Officer Arnoff restrains Hagen while medical staffers take x-rays of his wounded left leg. Hagen was 23 years old at the time of his arrest for shooting Malcolm X. At the time of his arrest, he was known as Talmadge X. Hayer. Hagen was sentenced 20 years to life in 1966. He has served time under the work release program. Finally, in 2010, he was completely released. Thomas Hagen and William Bradley, the assassins of Malcolm X, both former Nation of Islam members from Newark, New Jersey's Moss No. 25, are free men. William Bradley, the man who executed Malcolm X with the sawed-off double-barreled shotgun, has never been arrested for his role in Malcolm's assassination and hasn't spent one minute in jail for that crime. Accused of committing the crime, along with Hagen, was Thomas 15X Johnson and Norman 3X Butler. During his 1966 trial, Hagen testified that his co-defendants, Johnson and Butler, were innocent, but it came too late. Numerous lies ruined his credibility. And though Hagen previously lied, he truthfully described that the man who fired the shotgun was a husky, dark-skinned Negro who wore a beard. This confession was viewed as another outright lie. After deliberating more than 20 hours, a Supreme Court jury found all three men guilty. Why did shotgun assassin William Bradley act so brazenly bold at the crime scene that day? Was it a foregone conclusion that he would not be arrested? Why wasn't he subdued by the police for his resistance? Why was he able to calmly walk away? William Bradley still resides in Newark, New Jersey. He can be found on almost any given day at the First Class Championship Development Center, a gym located at 936 Bergen Street in Newark, New Jersey. 
the now grandfatherly looking William Bradley, whose infamous reputation on the streets of Newark, New Jersey, has a feared stick up man, bank robber, and assassin is alive and well, hidden in plain sight. You may have passed him on the street today. <laughs>